Hi there, and welcome to the first video in my series on getting started with Onshape. A couple things to note about this video. First is that this isn't really a tutorial, this is more of an overview. Uh, I'm gonna be producing tutorials at a later date, but this one's not a tutorial. So if you're if you're already familiar with feature-based modeling software and you're kind of trying to figure out what Onshape is all about, this is the video for you. Today is, in fact, day of the launch for the open beta. Today is the 9th of March, and uh, they just opened it up publicly to people to be able to sign on for the beta. I was graciously given a login by the good people at Onshape before the public beta, and they let me check it out and, and get used to it a little bit. So I'm going to walk you through it a little bit here. Let's go ahead and, and sign in. You'll notice here it's in a web browser. This whole thing is, is web-based. Uh, it's, it's platform independent, so you don't require a, a, an actual workstation. You can use a laptop, you can use a workstation, you can use a tablet. As you can see in this picture, you can use your phone. Um, it's incredibly flexible. The, uh, the staff at Onshape, I can't say enough about them. They're fantastic. They're really, really highly responsive and their feedback system is fantastic. One of the cool things about Onshape uh, is that you'll notice, we'll go ahead and sign in here really quick. Let's see, there we go. And put in the password here. You see this is a, a previous take. One of the things that you'll notice, if you look down at the bottom here, they've got a free option for the plan. And I'm not sure if this is gonna stick around, but as of right now, they have a free option and they have a paid option. If you're familiar with the pricing for these kinds of packages, you'll you'll notice it's generally in the the four to like forty thousand dollar range. It's it's wildly expensive, and these guys are are doing single licenses for I think like a hundred bucks a pop right now, which means that you've got you know unlimited private documents. And you can have all sorts of collaboration happening in it. It's really really neat what they've got going on here. I'm really excited about this package. So as I said before, Onshape is inherently a multi-user environment. Now, unfortunately, I don't have somebody else to show this with right now, but uh, in another video, we'll, we'll see if we can drum up another, another user and, and get somebody else working with, in this with me. So let's talk about things that they've already got. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document here. Now you'll notice also there's the ability to, to upload files and you can get all sorts of stuff. They've got a, just a laundry list of, of file formats that they can take. So let's call this one testing to open a new document. And it loads our workspace. You'll notice up at the top we have a familiar set of tools. We have a view cube and we have our features. Onshape doesn't make the file distinction between a part and an assembly. So if you have a file, the file is parts and assemblies. And you can break it up into all sorts of sub-assemblies down here but the, the actual file contains the whole the whole thing. So you don't have part files and you don't have assembly files. You just have files that contain parts and assemblies. You'll notice we have by default our our our, uh, our point of origin, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I have all this stuff. I don't need to explain this to you if you already know. And you can sketch, you pick your plane, you do your sketch, right? You can dimension your sketch, you can constrain your sketch, you can do all that stuff. So. All the necessities are there as of right now. The, the, if, if, in order to actually start drawing, the necessities are there. So you can sketch, you can modify your sketches, you can dimension, you can strain, you can add relations, whatever you want to call them, it can be done. It's got a standard suite of modeling tools. So let's go ahead and, and uh, just accept that. You'll notice here you've got you know, the ability to extrude, to be able to revolve, do sweeps, and thicken a substance, thicken a, a surface. You've got fillet and chamfer and draft and shell, and you've got options to be able to do patterns and mirrors and, and Boolean operations here, and then and some additional operations here involving modification of, of previous operations. And then you've got the ability to do reference geometry and helices and do mates and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just real quick pick that. You know, the software works a lot like SolidWorks, and that's not by accident. the The team that developed this actually is uh, is the original team from some from SolidWorks. So they they decided that they were going to do their own thing and and start their own their own deal. And so they're building from the ground up, which is why features are kind of rolling out bit by bit. 
These guys aren't in fact associated with DSO as far as I know. So let's go ahead and accept the extrusion. And you know, you can, you can do all this stuff, right? You can pick a plane and have it do all the coincident faces, or you can pick a single edge and have it, you know, fill it just a single edge. You can adjust the size to fill it. You can have it be a conic fillet or a tangential, blah, 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 blah. Anyhow, you, you know the drill. It's, I mean, if you've, if you used feature-based modeling, that's too big. If you use feature-based modeling software before, this is all going to be old hat to you. So, so that's that's pretty standard. Um, you can switch between a uh, an isometric view and a perspective view. So, and it's got some some preset views that you can do. You can do um, sectioning and, and all those wonderful things. So, I mean, as far as this goes, this is pretty pretty basic. The the big thing that you get out of this immediately that you can see right now that I don't have any kind of demonstration for right now but you could see right now um, is the fact that it's multi-user so you can have multiple people working in the same environment concurrently and that's really exciting so let's talk about another thing that's really really exciting about this and that is the way that it handles visual processing so what happens traditionally right you have a machine and it has some monster video card because this kind of stuff generally takes a pretty big video card and you pay you know like four to six thousand bones for a single video card and, and then and then you have to upgrade every like what two years or something like that and their software costs in the thousands of dollars and it just it's an expensive venture and these guys have kind of taken the teeth out of that whole thing. They the uh, the bulk of the processing happens on the back end, so they've got this this huge cloud infrastructure that they've put together, and they let you just use it. So you can get incredibly complicated uh, assemblies without having to have incredibly complicated hardware. Like you can run this on an iPad, right? You can run this on on your phone, um, and you can run any any of the assemblies, as far as I understand it, uh, that that they have here or that you build on, on any of these because it's, yeah, the processing is happening on the back end. So here's an interesting one. This is, I have to note here really quick, the, the lag that you're seeing is in fact not on their end. It's on my end. I've got, uh, I've, uh, I'm kind of in the back of the house working off a wireless connection right now. So if that gives you any kind of determination on how things are working. So you'll notice here, we have, a, again, a fairly a fairly complex assembly. Um, you can zoom in, you can see that we've got all these different parts that have been modeled. And you'll notice the poly count is, you know, it's not it's not amazing. This isn't render quality, but but the, uh, the functionality is all there. And um, one of the things you'll notice that they don't have, I'm working my, uh, my 3D connection mouse right now, and it's, you'll notice there's no, it zooms in and out, but that's it. There's no full full support for um, for three D mouse, which I'm I'm told they're working on. Um, again, the the people who are running this show are really really responsive. They're fantastic, and uh, they assured me that's something that's on the works. So let's take a look around here. Let's go ahead and pull around, and you'll notice again. Um, I'm I'm not running anything spectacular. I mean, normally this would probably still work on my computer on on. Uh, um, on on any kind of installed modeling package, but um, I'm I'm literally running with a, with a absolute entry level, it's like current gen, but it's entry level um, Pro Card. I've got I've got a K600, so it's not anything spectacular, and and it works just fine. The the uh, the bottleneck for me is is absolutely in in the in my internet connection and everything on their end for things is is really really snappy it's really really well put together um so you can you'll notice you can do all sorts of different stuff here you can turn perspective on and do your your things with this that's kind of fun anyhow so that's on shape in a nutshell and again the date today is uh the 9th of march so as things progress as they release new options I'm going to try and cover this on a weekly basis and uh, in terms of updates and so if you're interested in, in keeping updated with this go ahead and subscribe if you thought this video was good go ahead and like it and I will bring you more of them and I will see you in the next video